on both sides. Joining us now, Congressman Adam Schiff of Burbank. He's the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Boy, the polarization in our country and, and in some cases the lack of civility on display last night at this event that you were at, you and uh, Brad Sherman, your fellow Democrat, uh, trying to speak, and there were people who were not only screaming at you, approaching the dais. And I just wonder, in all of your years in politics, has it ever been this bad for folks in your position? No, it's never been like this, uh, where you get uh, multiple death threats, where people call your office with the most vulgar obscenities. Uh, the Democrats. And it's a shame. I had been to probably uh, at least a dozen League of Women Voters uh, debates over the last several years. I'd never seen anything like this. And I have a thick skin. It doesn't bother me, but it does concern me that you can't have much of a dialogue or a debate uh, without it becoming a food fight. Yeah. We want to talk to you as well about, of course, the big story today, these explosive devices that are being sent in the mail from New York to Florida, D.C., even here in L.A., two packages with mail bombs sent to Congresswoman Maxine Waters, uh, her office in L.A. Are you taking any precautions for your safety, and what do you know about the FBI investigation so far? Uh, we're taking precautions. Uh, I got a call from the police chief uh, here in Los Angeles just to check in with me. We've all gotten instructions about what we should do if we receive any suspicious packages. But, you know, we've been down this road before. Uh, we need to do our jobs. We need to go about our business. We're not going to be intimidated into not showing up at public events or whatnot. Um, but it, uh, it is something that we all need to pay attention to, this rise of political violence. Um, just since I've been in Congress, uh, I've had a couple of my colleagues in Congress, one Democrat, one Republican, both shot. Um, yeah. And... Uh, and I do think that while everyone can do a better job in terms of civility, that the president does set the tone for the country more than any other American. And the divisive nature of his rhetoric, uh, the, the degree of glee he shows when people you know, assault a member of the press, uh, it does have consequences. And I think we're seeing some of those consequences. The president did yesterday call for unity, but then at, at this uh, political rally, uh, he, he wanted to blame the media for the, the negative tone of, of what's happening in this country. There are some uh, who would also say, look, it's not just President Trump. It is some Democrats. And this idea of shouting out people who are uh, at a restaurant, Mitch McConnell the other night chased out of a restaurant, uh, you know, other uh, Republicans being um, yelled at while they're trying to have a meal. Is, is there... Is it on both sides, or do you believe that it's it's more on one side than the other? Well, it's certainly more on one side than the other, and, and you can always uh, engage in a kind of moral relativism and say, well, both sides do it. But the reality is the tone is set by the President of the United States, and, and yes, it does prompt a reaction uh, from the other side. But uh, there is a big difference between asking people to politely leave a restaurant uh, or voicing your disapproval of their family separation policy uh, and praising someone who assaults a reporter. There's a big difference between those things. Um, you know, the president would like to blur that distinction or blame the media or blame anyone but himself. But uh, this is the first president in my lifetime who doesn't seem to understand that a big part of the job of being president is to make us a more perfect union. Uh, he seems to feel politically it's advantageous for him to grow the national divide, uh, to bait people. Uh, it has worked for him politically. It got him elected president. But we need to make sure this doesn't become the new normal. I was surprised yesterday to hear the president did not reach out to former President Clinton or to former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton or to former President Barack Obama to say, you know, I'm sorry that this has happened to you and we are taking precautions to make sure that you are, are safe. Has that happened today as far as you know? Not as far as I know. Uh, it, it honestly does not surprise me very much. Um, if the president ever goes to that step, it's merely because he thinks it's a politically advantageous thing to do. It's, it's not really where he's coming from. Um, he, uh, you know, chance to lock her up at his rallies. Uh, you know, this, this guy who said at the Kavanaugh here is, you're innocent until proven guilty. Well, this is the whole lock them up crowd. Uh, so that's not who he is. And, and sadly, we can't expect him at this point to change. Uh, it's up to the voters in, uh, in less than two weeks to make the change. Uh, well, speaking of that, uh, you recently were quoted that if Democrats take back the House, there will be renewed investigations into the Trump administration. Um, can you be more specific on that? Well, our top priority is a non-investigative one. It's going to be putting forward a positive agenda on the economy for people who are working but not making enough to get by and to 
keep people's health care uh, that have pre-existing conditions. But we also expect that Congress should be a co-equal branch, as the founders imagined us to be, that we would, uh, yes, do oversight, um, which this Republican Congress has been unwilling to do. That's certainly true vis-a-vis -vis the Russia investigation, but it's true on a whole lot of other things. The high cost of prescription drugs, the poor U.S. government response to the, the devastating um, hurricanes, uh, the devastation in Puerto Rico, any number of key issues that the Congress has been unwilling to look into because the Republicans felt it would reflect poorly on the president. So we're going to, yes, do that oversight, and I think that's very important to our system of checks and balances. All right. Congressman Schiff uh, from Burbank, thank you very much for coming in.